Hi guys, thank you so much for tuning in once again. This is Battle with Ola. My name is Mujola Olua. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about corporate restructuring. Remember that in the last company law, corporate law uh, video, we talked about incorporation. That is how to legalize your business, to register it with the government in Nigeria, with the Corporate Affairs Commission. And uh, essentially, you're creating an artificial person which is your business entity and then you enjoy so many benefits and you have new features and then you are able to do some things and not do some things. So that's standardizing your business essentially. So it could be a private company, a public company, uh, a charitable organization, uh, or, or it, it could be, be an unlimited enterprise. So now when that business is undergoing a challenge, say maybe you're in debt, excessive you know big debt or you're trying to diversify reorganize your workings maybe you're trying to access a wider market or you're trying to uh, bring in new offerings into the market or you're ailing in some way how do you go about it that's what we want to talk about in this video and that is what corporate restructuring is all about we have internal corporate restructuring and external corporate restructuring i'm going to be talking about it in a further detail as we go on i like this topic because it's a very relatable topic it's an everyday topic you go about your business you read the news you go online and you see things about restructuring but you may not know what it is because you have not understood you know the conceptual basis or uh signages of what corporate restructuring is but when we talk about it today you will realize that it's something that you already know about so uh, corporate restructuring is the way by which a business reorganizes itself internally or externally and uh, there are a few laws that are guiding this process we have the karma of course uh, that's corporate analog matters act 2020 in Nigeria and uh, of course the law, the agency organization, that's the Corporate Affairs Commission. And then, then we, we have, have the FCCP, that's the Federal Competition and Consumers Protection uh, Commission. And uh, the FCCP, yes. that's the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Act of 2019. We also have the Investment and Securities Act and uh, we have the Securities and Exchange Commission, you know, administering that. Cause, and of course the court to go to is the Federal High Court. That's the court that has jurisdiction over restructuring matters in Nigeria. So let's talk about uh, internal restructuring. Internal restructuring is the kind of restructuring or organization of a business that takes place within the company. So it's like we're not washing our dirty linen in public. We want to do it within. And there are, you know, a few uh, types of in internal restructuring. We have, we have arrangement and compromise. We have arrangement uh, on sale. We have uh, management buyout. We have employee buyout. And we have uh, shares restructuring. That's for internal restructuring. As the name may imply, arrangement or compromise is simply uh, an arrangement made uh, by the company with its members, you know, to accept less than they are actually entitled to. So essentially, anyone the company is obligated to or that the company owes something, say shareholders, uh, debenture holders, creditors, those to whom the company is indebted. The company makes an arrangement with them, which is, which is then sanctioned by the Federal High Court uh, to uh pay them or be indebted to them to uh, uh at a lower value than uh they are actually so for instance this is used uh in a situation where maybe the company has run into debt serious debt so uh, now maybe a four billion dollar company for instance is now valued at one billion dollar or even less so if you're holding a share of uh uh if you're holding shares worth uh, say 50 million as a member of the company the company can come to an arrangement with you uh, so that you enter into a compromise such that those shares the value would be reduced the value of the shares will be reduced you still be a member of the company you still hold your shares but the value uh, attached to those shares are going to be reduced because the company's value has generally reduced the company has made a loss or is indebted and so you just reach a compromise with the company which is sanctioned by the court and then it becomes binding and uh, in that way the company is able to sustain itself and uh, remain a going concern. That's arrangement on compromise. Like mm -hmm. arrangement on uh, compromise, arrangement on sale is also an internal arrangement uh, by the members of a company, a company that is uh, sick, ailing, <laughs> that has probably run into debt, having a challenge, you know, to uh, wind up the company so the difference is different from uh, the solution of the company by winding up what this means is that uh, in a general meeting the members will reach a special resolution to wind up the company and appoint a liquidator that liquidator will then sell 
the undertakings or the assets of this company to another corporate body. So that means that the members of this company, whatever it is they owe, the value of what they owe, uh, when the assets of the company or the undertakings are sold to another corporate body, their ownership will be transferred to that body. So they will now owe in that other corporate body. And so this company is dying, but it's not dying as in dying, dying. What it, it's just uh, morphing into a different company. So it's like uh, when a phoenix dies and resurrects from its own ashes. So that's the difference between arrangement on sale and uh, dissolution or winding up. So it's a form of winding up, but they're winding up the company to transfer its assets, you know, to another corporate body. Or another company who will then uh, give the value of what is transferred to the members of this company in its own uh, company. So that's uh, basically what arrangement on sale is. Of course, it's an internal arrangement. It's voluntary, and uh, uh, the it could be in exchange for cash. Now they don't necessarily have to be a part of that company. They could take cash, or they could take shares in that corporate body. You know. Uh, so generally, that's a water arrangement on sale is. So, so essentially, they could give you money, take your money and go, or they could say, okay, we're buying these assets in exchange for shares in our own company. So you transfer your ownership to that company. And so your old company has morphed into a new company in this company that is buying your old company. So you're not losing as a shareholder because if you had sold your shares, you'd have gotten value, yeah? Maybe money or something. But uh, now the company, you are arranging within the company to say, let us sell to this other company. So they are buying you, uh, arrangement on sale. You are selling to them, they are buying you and they are paying you. They could pay you in cash. So if they pay you in cash, you take and go. They could pay you in shares in their company. They could pay you in policies. They could pay you in debentures. So that's what arrangement on sale is. We also have uh, what is called a corporate buyout, under which we have management buyout or employees buyout. Corporate buyout just means that uh, a portion of the company is buying out the other portion of the company, buying up the controlling shares. So let's say that uh, it's a private limited liability company now, and uh, it's owned by maybe a family of uh five or ten people so um five of those people could decide this is just an example i'm coming to the proper interpretation so five of those people could decide to buy the shares of the other five maybe all of them have uh maybe it's ten thousand shares and each person has two two thousand shares so these five or two of the 10 can decide to buy up all the shares of the other so they have the controlling shares now and uh they could buy all or just buy the controlling shares you know if, if two people for instance have eight thousand of ten thousand shares you know that they are they have the controlling shares so that's what a buyout is so now the uh, proper implication when it's an employee buyout it means that the employees of the company they are buying up the management so they are buying the shares of the management so essentially they are becoming the controllers of the company so it could be that the company you know has a challenge and it can no longer be a going concern and buying up those shares will infuse funds back into the company so that's employee buyout and it could be management buyout buyout which means that the directors you know the principal officers are the officers of the company they are buying up the shares of the employees of the company and the shares of all other shareholders and they now have the controlling shares in the company so that's where they are able to pump funds you know in exchange for shares into the company to sustain the company so that's also an internal arrangement that can be made it could be members or it could be management buyout but both are, is referred to as corporate buyout and then we have shares restructuring Shares restructuring is just a means of, uh, uh, you know, restructuring the share capital of a company, you know, reorganizing the, sh the capital, you know, of a company by maybe consolidating shares, by issuing new classes of shares, you know, to attract investors, to boost the company's financial status. It could be by payment of dividends. It could be by a conversion of shares. It could even be by share swap, you know, shares exchange. You could uh, offer that, okay, uh, take this money and give up your shares you could say that okay 
give up this class of your shares and then take up this new class of your shares in the new uh, investments or the new holdings that the company has. Uh, you could uh, it could take any form. So basically, you're trying to strengthen the capital base of the company. Uh, that is what is called shares restructuring. So it could be consolidating the shares, converting the shares, cancelling the shares, you know, subdividing the shares. So this could lead to dilution of shares and it could lead to, you know, strengthening the value of shares that some certain persons or members of the company hold. And it could also mean introducing new classes or types of shares into the market. So that's essentially uh, internal restructuring. So you can see that all these uh, types of restructuring is aimed at or are aimed at, uh, you know, strengthening the financial status and the health of the company generally. And it doesn't necessarily mean uh, or it could not, it could, it could be that the company is not even ailing or is not having any challenge. It could be that maybe there's a new government policy and the way that it affects the company now, there's need for restructuring if the company is going to survive. So that could be the solution. Mm -hmm. So now let's go to external restructuring. My favorite external restructuring features mergers and acquisitions, takeovers, purchases and assumptions and cherry picking. And we're going to run through them, you know, uh, very fast. Don't forget that I have a book on mediation. It's titled On Your Marks, Get Set, Mediate. It's a good book for uh, beginners in mediation and for people who are generally interested in medi mediation. It's uh, a memoir, so to speak. Me chronicling my almost three years experience, you know, as a mediator at a government facility in Nigeria. So I think it's something you'll find very interesting. You can listen to it as an audio book if you put it in a speech to text app or an, uh, a text to speech app. And uh, it's something that you could even sit down and read. It's an interesting and lovely read you know that that is what I always offer. I also have a collection of fiction uh, 10 short stories titled in Kuwait. These books are in the link in the description box and on your screen and I would love for you to buy these books. They are fairly priced. I would love for you to buy them and to read them and to enjoy them. Just uh, look at some other aspects of my life. So thank you, thank you so much. Let's go into external restructuring and we're going to talk about mergers and acquisitions first. Now, you know that I said that this topic is something that you see daily. Mergers and acquisitions are all around us, especially for Nigerian banks. You hear that this bank is no longer in existence. Ah, it is now this bank. And you just hear that ah, Orion Bank has changed to apply this bank. Or, or, or you hear that Saturn Bank has changed to Pluto Bank and all of that. So that is what mergers and acquisitions are all about it, mergers and acquisitions they connote a marriage of two entities a marriage of two entities now here's the difference for mergers we're talking about one company and another company coming together to become one it could also be one company and several other companies coming together to become one company that's a merger for instance uba united bank for africa merged with standard trust bank and continental trust bank and they became all of them became united uh, Bank for Africa. So it's essentially a way for companies to strengthen their financial basis, you know, very important. So it's a marriage. So they take on the name of uh, one of the companies or they could form a new name entirely. So that's why uh, it's uh, it's not only banks, but uh, you find out that it happens in the banking sector a lot, especially after the consolidation moves of uh, uh, Charles Solido, the CBN governor of Nigeria, you know, two governors uh, ago or three governors ago now. There have been two governors after him. So um, that is what a merger, a merger is. It could be horizontal, it could be vertical merger. When it's horizontal merger, it means that the businesses are in the same line of, of, of trade. For instance, bank to bank, that's merger horizontal merger. Vertical merger means that they are not in the same line of trade but they complement each other. For instance, if a company uh, is producing beverage and a company is producing beverage packaging, maybe they are producing tins and nylons and all of that for, or tea bags and a company is producing tea. So a tea uh, manufacturer and a tea bag making company can come together in a vertical merger to become one. So that is a, a vertical merger. Then we have conglomerate mergers, which is a merger between two enterprises or businesses that do not even do anything similar in terms of trade. So, but they come together, they form one entity. So a merger is a marriage. So it's like a, a man taking two, three, four wives 
and they now bear his name or they could create a new family name or they're essentially becoming one with him and uh, into him and under him but an acquisition is different in that one company is buying the other company so they're not forming a new entity that company is still in existence just buying another company as an extension of itself as an addition to itself the important things uh the important things for mergers and acquisitions is that uh, uh whichever company is undergoing or trying to venture into it must conduct due diligence, both legal due diligence and financial due diligence. You check the books because if you're uh, acquiring a company, for instance, if you're merging with the company, that means that you're, you're taking on all their assets, their liability, their debt, everything. You're taking it onto yourself or you're taking it in. So you're also taking in their reputation in the market, you know, you're taking in their goodwill, you're taking in everything. So, for instance, uh, uh, an advantage would be that maybe. Uh, a company has uh, goodwill maybe for instance um, I don't want to mention names I don't want to mention brands so let's say uh, a a juice company for instance that's already well known like everyone mentions it when you have visitors you go buy their juice and all of that but they are ailing and going under they can no longer sustain their business and here is another company that does not have that much goodwill that is still probably trying to access the market but they have the funds they have the money they could form a merger you know or the one with the money could acquire the one without the money but with the goodwill so when they form a merger they're the one that, that's going to decide uh how their corporate outlook will be such that they will now enjoy free goodwill in exchange for money so, so if it's a merger that means that uh, this company is not totally going into extinction it's just forming an alliance you know to progress so they could take on a new name or they could uh bear the name of any of the entities that are merging together of course the stronger party will always prevail if that's the route they decide to take but if uh they are doing an acquisition that means that even though you have the goodwill you're going to take on the name and uh, you'll be subsumed under this company that has the money that's buying you up so that's mergers and acquisition can you think of uh, a company that has merged or that's been acquired in your country wherever you're watching from leave me comments in the comment section now let's talk about takeovers i love takeovers too and here's why when i was a child or when i was younger than this there's a series we used to watch in my house it's called use and valleys or it was called use and valleys on uh i think it was nta was, was it silver bed it was one of these channels you know i think we used to watch it every friday yeah at some point it was me and my mom we used to watch it a lot you know i think other people went to school or were not around my dad was not really much interested in series like that so but me and my mom we loved it so much because my mom loved the character in it called joku tade she had a sharp tongue and she was always talking 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 at any <laughs> At anyone and any, she was dead devil. So maybe we we'll just be wondering what kind of human being is it you could But that aside, the reason why I really loved Eels and Valleys, and when we took uh, this course at law school at Nigerian Law School, I remember Kanu Campus. I can almost picture it now. I remember the Eels and Valleys, you know, for takeover. So there was uh, a a portion of uh, Eels and Valleys where. Okay, Eustace Valleys were generally about two families that were at logger aids, but one person was in love with the other person in the family and like that and like that. So uh, it turned out that uh, there was uh, there was a, an episode, was it an episode, a series of episodes, you know, there was a time when, uh, you know, one chief, both of them, I think both of them were chiefs, chief, chief, you know, Nigerian movies, uh, Nigerian sitcoms now. So there was this, uh, both of them had companies, you know, family com companies, family com private companies now private limited liabilities so there was a time when a uh, chief's uh son uh chief's son that was a doctor he was in love with uh the daughter of the other chief and it was a taboo so at some point the daughter was kidnapped i think was kidnapped and they needed money for ransom so the son so the son had confided in the mother and the mother did not have the money. She needed the money to raise for the son so that he could pay the ransom of his lover who was from the other family that their father must not know or hear about. So the mother now decided to sell her shares in the company and she, it was, uh, she had controlling shares, you know. So um, she looked for a buyer, someone found her a buyer. Unknown to her, the buyer was only uh, acting for the chief in the other family, they are arch enemy. So he fronted a buyer, an innocent third party purchaser, to purchase the wife's shares. 
and he now had controlling shares in his enemy's company. So that is what a takeover is. That's the easiest way to understand a takeover. So what uh, a takeover could be friendly, it's hardly friendly, or it could be hostile, it's usually hostile. Hostile takeover just means that this company targets that company and says, oh, we want to be able to control them. So we're buying up controlling shares, maybe at least 50% of the shares. So they could buy it surreptitiously, secretly, you know, buy up uh, the shares of members who are non-controlling shares. You know, maybe this one has 20,000 shares, this one has 20,000 shares, and your goal is to buy a million shares. So you keep buying 20,000 here 20,000 there until you have a million shares and you now have controlling shares in that company so for takeovers unlike acquisitions the companies are not being subsumed into each other they will still exist as separate entities it just means that the company that is taking that that has carried out a takeover now has controlling powers in the decision making of this other company so they are essentially now being responsible for how decisions are made for their assets and for their liabilities because they've bought controlling shares in that other company so that's what a takeover is i hope you understand it always remember is and vanish or go watch it if they are streaming it somewhere i don't know i don't know if it's kept somewhere if there's an archive or somewhere you can access it but that's how i easily understood takeovers and that's how you can understand it i hope you do so now we also have purchase and assumption purchase and assumption just means that one company a strong company you know big strong company is taking over or purchasing now not taking over it just means that one company is purchasing uh the assets and the liabilities of another company and assuming ownership and control of that company so this is usually done through the court so uh, the company that wants to purchase will make an application to the federal high court to sanction the purchase so instead of w the court winding up the company because it's failing or has failed before it becomes it no longer becomes a before it stops being a going concern instead of just winding it up as having failed the courts will now auction that company to this company that wants to buy the company would then buy and assume ownership and control of that company so, so that, that way the company is saved from uh death in a purchase and assumption this is uh what happens now i said that uh that other company will be purchased and then this other company purchasing it will assume ownership and control. It doesn't mean that this other company will continue to be in existence. It just means that uh, this other company will assume responsibility for all its debts, all its assets, all its liabilities. So if it's a bank, for instance, bank B is already failing. Bank A comes and says, uh, want to purchase and assume ownership uh, and, and assume uh, the responsibility for bank B. So that means all the insured depositors of bank B, those who have money in bank B, uh, account holders they will be transferred to bank a so let's say you were in, uh, applied this bank before orion bank has purchased your bank you will now become bankers with uh orion bank and all your assets and your liabilities with apply this bank will be transferred to orion bank so that is purchase and assumption so it's like a, a smooth transition of assets and liabilities assets if any and liabilities you know to a bank that is purchasing of course a bank that's purchasing or a company that is purchasing would have also done the due diligence financial due diligence legal due diligence to know that the bank maybe the company may be ailing them but maybe they have goodwill they have a reputation and they have you know uh, uh maybe assets that uh, would eventually turn in or turn out money or revenue in the future if properly managed or if rebranded of uh, or or if uh or if uh, money is pumped into it, uh, into the venture and all of that. So the last one is cherry picking. This has been a long video. I hope that you saw it up to this point. If you did, give me a thumbs up in the comment section. Cherry picking is the last but not the least uh, of uh, types of uh, external restructuring. And what it means is that now, as the name implies, a business is allowed to cherry pick. So if a, if a business is failing, now a company, company B is failing, Yes, and company A now wants to uh, take over company B or buy some aspects of company B. Company A will not buy the entirety of company B, but to inspect the books, it will do its due diligence, financial due diligence, legal due diligence, and only buy up or take on the parts of company B that is profitable 
or that can be sustained or revived or revitalized as the case may be. So let's say company B is uh, a soap maker or soap manufacturer. It's manufacturing baby soap, adult soap, uh, fragrance soaps, toilet soaps, uh, detergents, dishwashing liquid, all sorts. So I'm just using an example. Now company A will now come and say, okay, this uh, conglomerate or this uh, audience is failing now. Uh, people already love the detergent. People love the detergent. The detergent is doing fantastic. Or maybe the detergent has already generated enough goodwill and can be revitalized to a profitable level. So we're only buying up the detergent arm, or we're only, or we're only going to buy the fragrance soap arm and the dishwashing arm and the detergent arm, all of the arms or all of the branches of businesses under it. We're not interested. They are not viable. They do not work for us. So they cherry pick literally after inspecting the books and all the assets and liabilities of the company. So they pick the assets, they leave the liabilities, so to speak. So that is what cherry picking is. So from the foregoing, we've looked at uh, corporate restructuring. We have looked at internal and external corporate restructuring. The important thing is that uh, if a company is ailing, if a company is failing, or if uh, there's a new government policy that uh, now mandates or makes it necessary for a company to reorganize its structure or its share capital or its capital base, you know, that's not the end of the road. The company does not need to end. So there are so many ways of diversifying, of reinventing the company, or of the company reinventing itself as we have seen in this option. Now you can see it's a very interesting topic. I love, love, love corporate restructuring and I hope that you love it too. Leave me feedback in the comment section. Mail me at us of at gmail.com and don't forget that if you want to consult, you can book a paid consultation with me with the link in the description box and on the screen. And I will see you in my very next video. Don't forget to subscribe. Toodles!